OK, so we know that a circle that's centred at the origin of radius r has the equation x squared plus y squared equals r squared. OK? Now, in our diagram here, let's say I've got a single point on the circle and it will have coordinates x, y, OK, for some x and y. Now, if I draw a radius, OK, that's of length r. And if I drop a perpendicular, forming a right angle triangle, OK, then what I can start to do is I can start to think of uh, how I can define x and y parametrically. OK, now we know that this equation, OK, is where we get sine squared plus cos squared equals 1 from, okay? The fact that we've got Pythagoras here, so we've seen this before. We've seen where that identity comes from. It comes from the unit circle. Now we're generalizing it to a circle center of the origin with radius r. So if I was thinking about, well, what is, how can I represent the base of this triangle? Well, the base of this triangle is the adjacent OK, and the hypotenuse is R. And we know that the adjacent and the hypotenuse, so A and H, can, with theta, be represented as cos theta. So cos theta is equal to the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse, which we know is R. So the adjacent is just R cos theta. So we could write that as r cos theta. Now, the opposite, OK, the height of this triangle is the, well, we could write it as opposite. So we've got the opposite. We've got r, the hypotenuse. So we can say that sine theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse r. And so r sine theta is your opposite. OK, so effectively, you know, we know that r squared cos squared plus r squared sine squared will be equal to r squared. OK, now that's because plus r squared sine squared theta equals r squared. OK, because you can then say, well, cos squared plus sine squared is 1, you could factor the r squared out, or you could divide both sides by r squared, and you get left with the identity cos squared plus sine squared is 1. Okay, So they are synonymous. Now, because we're happy with the fact that this equation works, okay, that's the equation of our circle, we could then say, well, x here is actually that x coordinate, which is that distance r cos theta. So x equals r cos theta. And the y is r sine theta. And so what we have here are a pair of parametric equations that define a circle centered at the origin with radius r. Okay? And so here is our parametric equations that go with it. Now, that is the circle, OK? However, we can then extend that to looking at ellipses, OK? Because here we fixed R. R is the same for both the X equation and the Y equation. And so we could say that if I made changes to that and I said that actually we had a cos theta and y is equal to b sine theta, then what would we have? Okay. Now, we know that cos theta and sine theta both go between 1 and minus 1. Okay, so having our understanding of cosine going between 1 and minus 1, and also for sine.
okay? That means that x must be going between minus a and positive a, and y must be going from minus b to positive b. Now, if a and b are different, that means that we don't have a circle anymore. We have an ellipse. So we could have something that looks like this. My ellipses aren't perfect. Quite difficult to draw ellipses. Okay, so y is going between minus b and b. So there's b, there's your minus b, there's a, there's your minus a. So this pair of parametric equations defines an ellipse centered at the origin of width uh, 2a and height 2b. Okay, so what would be the Cartesian equation that goes with that? Well, if you rewrote these as cos equals and sine equals, so cos is x over a, uh, sine is y over b, you could substitute them into sine squared plus cos squared is 1. So cos squared would be x over a, so x over a squared, and sine squared is y over b squared would be equal to 1. Now, sometimes it's written like this, or you could write it as x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. But either of those are the general form, the general Cartesian equation of an ellipse centred at the origin with width 2a and height 2b. Okay, so here's your circle, here's the Cartesian, here's the parametric equations, here's the ellipse, the Cartesian, and the parametric equations. Okay, and so these ideas can all come together, and so you could be asked potentially to sketch an ellipse given the, either the Cartesian or parametric equations. More likely the parametric equations because that's really what we're most interested in, what we're most interested in understanding what these equations do and what type of curve you get from them.